What's up, my dear? You guys, guess who I got in the building today? None other than Elgin Charles. Hey. Mr. Charles, that is, y'all. Right. <laughs> From Beverly Hills, y'all. We in LA doing it big up in here. Come on. <laughs> What I'm going to do, we are going to say grace. And you know what? This is the camera right here. Oh, okay, I keep looking at myself. You know, everybody do that. Everybody want to look yeah, at this Yeah, yeah. Look, listen, y'all. Y'all know I got the viewfinder over here. But the camera is that little circle right okay. there. Hi, camera. But we're going to look at it once in a while to see if we look, we looking right. Right. <laughs> okay. Okay. Do okay. I'm gonna keep my eyes on the camera. Okay. Yeah, yeah. But anyways, y'all, I'm going to say grace. And then we're going to get it in. We're going to learn a lot about Elton Charles, y'all. When I tell y'all, he is raising the ceiling for a lot of us. I mean, he breaking the ceiling for a lot of African Americans, y'all. Y'all are going to be shocked and shook and everything else. But if this um, video don't motivate y'all, I don't know what will. But me and my husband has been very, very inspired by reading the things that he has done and he has accomplished. So you guys, you are in for a treat. We gonna um, he gonna say grace today. Uh huh. I'm gonna say grace. <laughs> he gonna say grace, and we gonna get it in. Okay. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Yes. We worship you. We give you all the honor and glory. Thanks yes, so God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father, for this meal to come together and fellowship and eat and talk about the positive things and, yes. and also just think, talk about things that you have worked through us to accomplish. Yes, I am so grateful to meet Bethany here, Father God, Thank and her you. husband, Nate, and that we can just come together and just share lovely stories together. Yes. And we thank you for your presence, Lord, and we just thank you for all that you have done for us. Yes, Lord. And Father, bless this food. Yes, And those Lord who God. prepared this food for us so it can be nourishment to our body. In Christ's sake, we pray. Amen. Amen. Right. Yes, y'all. That right. was a good. Yeah, we can grub now. We can grub. <laughs> we got we got Popeye's chicken, y'all. We got the chicken on deck with the my, my, um mashed potato coleslaw, mm -hmm. macaroni and cheese, green beans, and red beans and rice. And we got the sauce on deck. It's all about the sauce. Yes, y'all. Is this spicy? So and that's about it. Okay. So we can just dig in. All right. All right. Get uh, it in. Let me see. Let me see. <laughs> He's like, let me see. I want to check out that sauce, man. Yes. Just take your piece chicken and just dig in the sauce. I, See, you he, know, I'm gonna start with a little chicken wing. Yes. You know, and I'm gonna dip it on here. All right, all right. Yes, yes. You gotta dig deep. Dig deep. Dig deep. Yeah. All right. Okay. Ooh, what's in here? Yeah, everything. Onions and we got garlic in here. We got the ginger going on and the spices. All right, all right. All right. Let me see. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Oh, huh? Mm hmm. Kind of casually like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. You like it? I do. <laughs> it goes on both. Mm -hmm. Seafood and uh. Yes, everything like beef, chicken, veggies. Man, you know what? I just my subscribers really asked me. You know, you just need to make up your own sauce. You know, make your own sauce, and I start making my own sauce, putting everything in the kitchen sink in the in this sauce, and this is how I came out. I'm trying to understand it. <laughs> I think hard. <laughs> It's everything, and then that's why it's just like you know, it's just a good a flavor, a good mm -hmm. taste, or whatever. It makes you want to go back to it. Mhm, mm it works. Yeah, I'm, I'm loving it. So, y'all, mm. I'm gonna have Elgin tell a lot. You know, there's a lot of things that he has accomplished. What I want to what I want to tell y'all is that he was the first um, hair salon. Black hair salon in Beverly Hills. Yes, I was. So when when did you start? Mm. Oh, that's some good stuff. <laughs> Thank you. When did I start? When did I start? Man, it goes way back. Now, I didn't want to uh, be a hairdresser, but you, I loved hair from mm -hmm. the time I was born. It mm -hmm. was just like I loved it. But I didn't want to do hair. I didn't respect it as a career. Mm -hmm. So I did this. Smith Barney, Corporate America, all that stuff. Trying to please my dad, you know, just trying to do all that stuff. And my mom kept saying, you need to do hair, you need to do hair. I'm like, I don't want to do no hair. <laughs> I got way more talent and ambition than to do hair. Mm -hmm. And then I hit a glass ceiling of, uh, at Smith Barney where, you know, I couldn't get ahead anymore. I was stuck in a position. I was like, I can't do this. Mm. And I started thinking about what mama said. Mama said do hair. So I went out and I started doing some research because now, that vision was in Texas. Oh. I'm here in California now. Okay. I'm here in California at 21 because I want to be grown. 
<laughs> in Texas, you know, 18, you grown. So oh, okay. We're, we're out there at 16. You know what I mean? Right, right, right. But here you got to be 21. And uh, I, I wasn't into the fake IDs and all that stuff because I'm, I'm not at home. Uh -huh. I'm here. Right, right. And I was living with my aunt. Mm -hmm. So uh, I decided I was going to check out the beauty schools. And I ended up at Marinello's. And I also heard about Vidal Sassoon. Mm -hmm. Vidal Sassoon is the one that gave me a vision. Because he was like, he had salons in Beverly Hills. Oh, London, yeah, I remember that. Paris. Well, I remember the name. Yeah, that's right. that soon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he had architectural cutting kind of mm -hmm. thing with the lines. He brought out the straight hair. He the one that took it from the bouffant. Okay. To straight lines. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's, he's incredible. So when I found out about him and I realized that you can have your own salons, you can, you know, there's no limit to what you can do. Mm -hmm. I said, I'm going to go. And I went to the school and I said, look, if I come here, I need you to do me a favor. Make sure I get my foot through the door of a Beverly Hills salon. Because mm. I knew then location, location was going to be key. Wow. So he said, yeah. I said, all right, I'm going to come and I'm going to work. And he, they worked me like a dog, man. I loved it, though. Uh -huh. I, mean, I had the whole school want to do hair. I had clients coming in from everywhere. Boy, we partied so hard up in that school because I didn't <laughs> hair. I never get tired of doing hair. Really? Never. I can do hair and I could be on no sleep and still be curling some hair if I had to. Wow. Love, and wake up the next day with the same kind of, you know, zeal. Right. Yeah. So it's a gift. You got that. This is all through you. Mm -hmm. That's amazing because you have done so many people's hair. Y'all, if y'all hear the list, What's the list is crazy. You know, you had, what you say? Uh, you. I know you did Anita Baker's mm -hmm. and... Yeah, I've done Anita Baker, I've done uh, Diane Carroll, Tia yeah. Ter Tamara, uh, Angela Bassett, uh, Beverly Johnson, Serena wow. Williams, uh, Holly Robinson P. Uh, God, see, you get the name and names. Yeah, yeah. But it's I've been in this for 30 on. years. Come on. Yeah. That and, uh, let's go back to how I got in Beverly Hill. Mm -hmm. I was doing Natalie Cole's hair. Really? Okay? And she had a TV show called Big Break. And I was, had just joined an organization called the CCIA, Christian Cosmetology International Association. Uh -huh. Ellen Davis, president. And I was learning how to pray effectively and how to pray and believe God for whatever you wanted because I was in ministry school. Right, right. So I prayed to ask God for a salon. And as I was on my way going to do Natalie Cole's hair for a big break, I heard this, my spirit say right there. And I looked up and it was a police sign. And I thought about it. I said, hmm, high rise, you know, mm -hmm. kind of weird. But I kept it in my spirit, went on and did the hair, called this girl named Ollie. And I said, girl, I think I know where to put the salon. And she's like, where? And so she investigated and everything. And she was looking at all these other places. And I said, no, nah, no, nah, it's right there. It was called the Truman Building at the time. Mm. And it was on the sixth floor they had a place. And it used to be a skincare place. Walked in there and I saw that there's water. I said, I can put my shampoo bowl. Uh -huh. Said, this is it. And I wanted to be in the high rise to get away from people looking at me. Because mm -hmm. being in Beverly Hills, you know, you're... You, they're looking at you. Right. First black man. So I was like, I go wherever the Lord leads me. Mm -hmm. And he put me on the sixth floor. I started by myself. Word got out. Next thing I know, two stylists came. And they was working with me. Then another. And next thing I know, I was building out, taking the whole half of the floor. And people started coming all over the place. Because there was no black people, no place for black people to come do hair in Beverly Hills. Wow. And when I opened up my salon, they just started coming. And we had a good time. I mean, Clifton Davis coming up in there. Uh, I had a lot of stylists that did a lot of other celebrities, well, celebrities as well, mm -hmm. like Tony Green. Mm -hmm. We had Maynard up in there. Oh, my God. And we was just doing it, and no one knew because we was up there, but we had a view of the whole hill, like this here. Mm -hmm. That whole hill, we just, it was it was Be Wow. Fun. And then we had little private suites because it was like an office building. Mm -hmm. So everybody had their little space and then a grand open space and stuff. And I'll tell you, we had some good times. That's when Natalie was doing uh, big, no, she was, uh, Unforgettable came out. Mm -hmm. That was when I had opened up my salon. Wow. And, and, and homegirl gave me a couple of stacks, about 10 stacks to buy my furniture too. Really? Yeah. She, wow. She but I, I gave her, she said, I had to pay her back. I said, I will, 90 days. She said, 90 days, 90 days came, she came for her money. Wow. And girl, that check, that check cleared. Because we're doing twenty five dollars a blow dryer. Uh, that I mean, now they're coming down now, but mm -hmm. you know, back then, you know, that I get like a hundred dollars blow dry. So that's like to make a thousand dollars, you know how many people you have to do. Yeah, that's, that's a lot. lot of work. And when I made my first thousand dollars, I was like, Yeah. I mean I was motivated. 
I wow. mean, I worked for a product company, everything. But that's how I ended up. Uh, I ended up going to Adrian Houghton, mm -hmm. which was in uh, uh, West Hollywood on Melrose Place. But there, a guy named Adrian Houghton had a salon there. And then there was this other brother named Bruce, Bruce mm -hmm. Johnson. He was the only black guy that worked there. And he couldn't use the stove because they didn't let you use the stove up in there. Oh. You know, that smell of the stove. Uh -huh. And, you know, a white people ain't into that. You know, uh -huh. like, hair burn? What's that burn? Oh, yeah, you know yeah, I mean? yeah. So we couldn't, we had to only use electric. So I assisted a guy named Blaze who worked for Redkin. He was a guest artist. So I assisted him, and that's how I got my foot through the door. Wow. Okay. Mm -hmm. So now I met Bruce, and Bruce was a wonderful guy. He did Oprah. He was doing uh, uh, Diane Carroll at the time. He was doing uh, he was doing everybody, and uh, I mean he had a great clientele. So I would help him out, and I would just be there for him and stuff. And that's how I met Natalie Cole. And uh, she was straight out of rehab. You mm -hmm. know, Natalie had a, a interesting past, mm -hmm. and she, I was new, and she knew she could control me. And I went on the road with her, and I did her hair, and I wow. just did whatever I could. And she's so sweet to me. And uh, we bonded over that, mm -hmm. that whole experience. So then the salon closed, and uh, I ended up going to uh, another salon. And I was there maybe two months, and that's when I realized that I'm paying like $3,000 in commission to this place. I should be able to Ooh. open up my own salon. Well, sure. You feel me? Yeah, yeah. So that's when I was on my way to Big Break, and I saw that uh, uh, place, and I ended up getting my salon, and that's the first salon. Wow. Now, six years in, uh -huh. the building needed to be repaired, uh, air conditioning was going out. Oh, wow, really? Hair was sweating back before they can get out the salon. Wow. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. So I had to break that lease, man. Wow. I had to break it, and I ended up moving um, down there on Little Santa Monica. God always got stuff for you. Now. Oh, always. You know? Always. And that was like from 90211 to 90210 in the tramp Triangle. I mean, it was superb property. Mm -hmm. And the guy who had it couldn't really hold on, and he heard about me, so he came over to me, too, talking about, this is for you, man. You're going to do it. You're going to be big. You're going to have, you know, uh, 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 he would say that the uh, sightseeing uh, uh, buses are going to come by and see wow. you and all that. He prophesied that to me way back then, and I'll tell you, everything he said came true. Wow. Everything. That's amazing. Cause you are doing some good things, like why? Cause you was on um, Chris Rock. What was it? Go I'm sorry. Go <laughs> I know I'm gonna have it. Y'all know I'm gonna have to talk, get in, talk, and I guess like okay, I'm trying to balance this thing. Eat and talk, eat and talk. Look, I'll be spitting all over the place. <laughs> um, but uh, what were you saying? You was in Chris Rock. Good um, hair. Good hair. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, Chris is cool. Mm -hmm. He gave me an opportunity because. Uh, I know they was doing it on hair, mm -hmm. but they hadn't come to me to be a part of it. Mm -hmm. So he was in Atlanta, and he came up to a dude who happened to be my vendor for my hair. Oh! And so he said to him, who do you supply? And he mentioned me, Elgin Charles and Beverly Hill. Okay. So that's how they came that's how they, out. Okay. Okay. And so when we were shooting that scene and everything, uh, we was going back and forth, and I said, uh, I brought up Vivica, that she doesn't use Indian hair uh -huh. and stuff like that. And I was just playing with Vivica. And stuff, but it, she ended up with a hairline after that. Oh yeah, I saw that. Okay. I saw that. She worked that. She, mm. you know. Mhm. Mm but uh, uh, yeah. So I did that show. I How was that? How was that for you? Was it? It was, you know, it was fun, man. It's, uh, uh, first time you're doing something like uh -huh. that. First time uh -huh. on, on the on the big screen. On reality and then, TV, yeah. and I mean, no, that well, was that was a movie. Yeah, that, that was a movie. movie. But you have, did you, have you been, um, did, have you done reality? Of course, baby. I started off in reality. Oh, okay. When it first came out with, uh, like, uh, what was it? All the makeover shows. Uh-huh. You know, Extreme Makeover. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. All the salon in Beverly Hills. Okay. So they came to me every last one of them with the show. I, I was doing so many shows, I was giving it to the stylists to do. Really? Because they always need someone to do their black hair. Yeah. The show and then the location. And then oh, the okay. And so that was a lot of work, wasn't it? Yeah, it was a lot of work. Mm -hmm. A lot of work, a lot of uh, you on TV, timing, cut, and yep, come back, yep, and, yep. <laughs> and make up, and stuff. And then from there, I kept on, kept on, and then I got mm -hmm. my own reality TV show, and that was it. Mm. You know, the feeling of that was so good. Really? I mean, the feeling of someone giving you the green light on first to shoot a sizzle, mm -hmm. and then to come back, and then they tell you you get your own show. That feeling there, I mean, you feel so blessed. I mean, when you when I say blessed. It's like, wow, God 
shine light on me to give me a show on TV. And you wow. know, black folks, all they want to do be on TV. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. And so that fellow was so good. I mean, uh, it was mm. just as good. And then the bad part is when they canceled my show. And that was sad, too. Mm. You know? Do they tell you? Do they tell you why they cancel it, or do they just you uh, just don't know? It's it's mostly about ratings. Okay. And okay. I was on VH1. We was up against uh, uh, Mob Wives. Oh yeah. We was up against uh, all those shows at that time, and we okay. were, we had over a million viewers. Everybody just knew our show was gonna get cut out because it was a phenomenon. Wow. But the, right after my show, three other shows popped up real quick. Mm. They were starting. You know, they thought mm -hmm. these big sensations and stuff. So, but I was the first to have a reality TV show. Mm -hmm. back then. And right I, when reality TV they just started, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, and I was really like a little worried about it because of the uh, violence and people getting mad and they like all that drama. Mm -hmm. I'm like, it's gonna mess with my right, brand. Right, 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 right. Mm -hmm. you know, so I said, well, as long as I act right and I don't let them get me out of character, right, right, then I can represent myself. Oh, well. in a good way, in and a I'm positive way. You, it really blessed me. Mm -hmm. People came from everywhere. I wow. moved there to Louisiana, mm -hmm. Tennessee, gold teeth and stuff. <laughs> gold teeth and I'm telling you, hey, wow. I've never seen so much color in Beverly Hills in all my life until that show was on there. Wow. I mean, they kept coming and they would come through the salon and get off buses and I had to take pictures and stuff and everything. But the uh, interesting thing is when the lady came in in a wheelchair with oxygen. And all she wanted to do was meet me because she saw me on TV. Aww. And that was her bucket list before she died. That was... She had terminal. She was terminal. Yeah. That's amazing. Now that, that That's... was, uh, you start thinking that your platform is for a reason. Mm -hmm. When you share it, yep. you help people mm -hmm. have peace mm -hmm. and uh, comfort. Right. During those kind of times. Mm -hmm. So that, that was, that was one of the many stories. Wow. Of how, TV and all that really affects That's people. That's amazing. Yeah, really affects people. And also, too, the, um, so besides that, you have been, you, he was married to Jack A for 227. That's my birthday. Really? Two, what two, you seven. mean? 227? Two, two, February 27. Really? Isn't that something? Isn't that interesting? Mm -hmm. Wow. I could, I was like, okay, so how was it? I mean, you know, I don't know what, well, how was it being married to her? You know, how long was you guys time. married? Seven years. Okay. Seven and then I know you got a child named mm -hmm. Frank, Frank out of it. Yes. Yeah, it's my baby boy. And how old is he now? 26. Oh, there mm -hmm. ain't no baby boy no more. <laughs> no, he can make some babies now. Beautiful he baby. Made, <laughs> he got two babies. <laughs> Gorgeous baby. Ooh, my yeah. grandson Kaiden, he's two. Oh. And my uh little baby girl, Liv. And she's uh almost four months. Four months. Yeah. yeah and they are so so adorable. I know. I know they keep you young. They probably keep you on your toes like <laughs> Ooh, yeah, I, you know, he can run after him. He's twenty six. Mm hmm I just wanna hold him until they start getting to whatever mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. Right, <laughs> exactly, back. exactly. As long as they sweet and all that stuff, I'm here. Yeah, enjoy it while you can. Yeah, I'm telling you. But being married to Jack A was cool. Mm -hmm. Jack A uh, came into the salon. Mm hmm. That's how y'all met? Mm hmm. Going to Abby Red Wine. A, a girl back there in the back. So I had my little section and stuff. And she wants to sit in the dryer in my area. Uh -huh. I said, sure, you can sit there. So she on the dryer, you know, probably looking at me. <laughs> Of course, I knew who she was. Yeah. <laughs> and then she got up and she left and went on out. And then she came back through and she said hi again. So that was it. it was no biggie. And then I was at a, a Halloween party. And Joe Marie Payton, mm -hmm. she's from uh, Family Matters, mm -hmm. you know, Urkel and all that. Mm -hmm. Okay, Joe Marie. Okay. was having a, a Halloween party. And, uh, 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 she showed up with Kiki and uh, uh, Bill Johnson, Reginald Bell Johnson, who's the uh, father on uh, Family Matters. Uh huh. And uh, Kiki from the Apollo, you know, she does this. You remember? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I know he's about. Yeah, yeah. Apollo, huh? Uh huh. And they came in, and Jackie was dressed like Marilyn Monroe, blonde wig, the white dress, mm -hmm. lips, eyelashes, stuff, and I went <laughs> beautiful, gorgeous. And uh, she saw me and came straight to me. And I knew she was coming to me, and I was like, you know. Right, right, right. I'm going to put her hand on my chest, hi, like that. I was like, hi. Wow. <laughs> just, can I talk to you a minute? I like, 
okay, and we went over to the side and we was talking and stuff and, and uh, all that. Oh, wow. And then she was like, I think we should go out on a date. Uh, you know, I said, yeah, I think that would be nice. Yeah, I said, but um, I got a lot of things to do. I, 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 I'm going to have to like, for two months, no, two weeks. I said, I'll call you in two weeks. Mm -hmm. And I waited two weeks. I was really praying on it because I was fresh out of ministry school. Oh, okay. And I had, you know, I had done nothing in a mm -hmm. long time. You know, mm -hmm. I was celibate. I was mm -hmm. all that stuff. And I was believing God for a wife. Uh-huh. I had three other girls that flown in right at the party, too. Mm. You know, it was all of them. was like, you know, I was right for it. All right. Okay. And everybody, I tell you, <laughs> when I married Jackie, I lost half my clientele. Oh, wow. <laughs> Those girls was mad. Wow. But uh, uh, I saw her over there. And I called her back in two weeks. And we went out on a date, and we was inseparable from that wow. point on. We just stayed together and stuff like that. And then I had to go to London and do a, a hair show. And then she said, well, let's go to Paris first. And then we go to London. So we all got on the plane, and we went to Paris. And that's when we kind of got engaged and stuff. And then we went to Aww. London. And then when I was in London doing the show, that's when I got a call that my mama was missing. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I yeah, heard about good, that. The yeah, 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 the yeah. Bad, the bitter was yeah, the sweet, all yeah, that stuff. Yeah. I tell you, my life has been balanced. Mm -hmm. I'm a humble individual. Mm -hmm. Wow, and that brings me to say that he wrote a book, mm -hmm. and that book is by what is it called? It's called By the Way. By the Way. It's a memoir about my life. Yes. I've had a very interesting past. It starts off with me as a young man trying to figure things out as well as how I think, figure things out. My love for the Lord and how the Lord has given me the understanding mm -hmm. to understand me, what I'm all about, understand mm -hmm. other people, and how to uh, walk by the Spirit and not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Mm -hmm. So, and deny myself. So mm -hmm. that's what ministry school taught me. So I went through that phase. Mm -hmm. And then after I got through that phase, I married and I obtained favor from the Lord. I tell you, I was strict. I was in the world. Mm -hmm. And I told my mama I was going to be a preacher. She said, you ain't no preacher. <laughs> Your mama said, <laughs> I was so offended. Oh. Anyway, in this book, mm -hmm. this book is awesome. Uh, it's uncensored. Okay. Okay, so it's a good read. The first mm -hmm. book was Believe and Conceive and Achieve It, How to Use God's Word to Become a Successful Person in Desire. Oh. That was like a thesis. Mm -hmm. and, you know, I wrote that to just show all that I learned through ministry school. Okay. And it teaches you how to believe God on principle and on scripture and mm -hmm. how to confess and all those things. And you're you you under uh Frederick Price. You Frederick oh, Price. Frederick, okay, yes. yeah, yeah. Father of Faith. Yes, I know, you know exactly what it is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Real, real word. Oh you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. And so this book mm -hmm. is all the other stuff. Mm. All the salacious stuff, all the uh, uh, understanding of becoming a married man, becoming a father, owning a business, only black man in Beverly Hills, uh, having to deal with the uh, uh, prejudice, yeah. having to uh, learn how to keep everybody uh, from, you know, wilding out. Because mm -hmm. we had some wilding out experiences. Mm. You know, America's Most Wanted came to the swan one time. Really? Because a girl came in there, that was on America's Most Wanted. It was scary. Wow. But we got through that. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> but anyway, that book uh -huh. is off the chain. And I, that's your copy. I autographed oh, it too. Oh, thank you. And I want you to read it now. It's, it's, I will. It's, it's uh, a page turner. I will, definitely. It's a page turner. You, you like, can't put it down. Wow. And, and when you get done, you'll be edified and you'll see a lot of yourself in there. Mm -hmm. Because I've been through so much mm -hmm. on all aspects. Wow. That uh, is relatable. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's relatable. And uh, so that's wow. my book, Elgin Charles. By the way, baby, by the way. <laughs> and you can get it at elginchars.com mm -hmm. slash by the way. All right. And it'll take you straight to Barnes & Noble. All you have to do is click the book. So I'm going to put the link yes, in my description box so they can be able to find it right. easily. And also follow me on Instagram mm -hmm. at Elgin Charles and also Twitter okay. at Elgin Charles. I'm going to have all okay. that stuff in my description box so they can be able to check that out. Yeah, I want some followers. Oh, yeah. Get you some followers. <laughs> Him. I got a little plenty of y'all that will go over there and follow him. He's positive. He got some things going on. He can teach us. Yes, yes, baby. Follow me. Mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm the papa. Mm. You know, I've been around a long time. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm, my next birthday, February 27th, mm -hmm. I'm going to turn 60. Wow. I'm born in 1960. I'm going to turn 60 in 2020. All those zeros. Wow. <laughs> what, are you, what you going to do? Well, I'm going to, uh, tonight I'm leaving going to, uh, uh, Port Lauderdale, because I'm going really? to go on a cruise. Okay. 
Okay. Yeah, I'm going through the Caribbean on the soul. Oh, really? Yes, it's like 20 of them. Oh. We're all coming and we're going Glody White from uh, uh, Barry White's Willow. Okay. Y'all's Ryan is going to be going. Val Young from Mary, J, uh, uh, Mary Jane Girls. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and then a whole lot of other friends are going. Wow, that's going to be nice. Yeah, and they got all that entertainment and stuff. What? I've never been on a cruise, so I'm <gasps> really Oh, you went for a treat then. Because uh, cruises are very oh, amazing. They say, you it know, is. as long as it's not rocking. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it ain't going to rock. Uh, they be too big. Everybody be scared of that, but... It's gonna be. I'm, you gonna have a good experience. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Mm. I'm, I'm excited. You know, I ain't been on a real vacation since Jackie and I divorced. Really? Too busy taking care of kids, keeping that, that business going. Yeah, that man. Grind. Yeah. You know what I leave? That's money. Oh yeah. That's double money. <laughs> Go on vacation, spend money, and double Quite money. Right, and exactly. Know, and the rents be high. Mm -hmm. You know. Mm -hmm. I can't believe I've been to Beverly Hills for like twenty some years. <gasps> Paying that high. Man, right. it's, y'all, it's a super expensive out here. Yeah, man. I don't know how I did it. It's all through faith. Mm -hmm. And then you just uh, believe God and you go to work every day and you do your thing. Mm -hmm. And you, one thing about the service industry, and I tell her, so, it's not about you. Mm -hmm. Your conversation is not one. Mm -hmm. Unless they ask you. Mm. It's about them and right. being on time. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and people are punctual and they want to get in and out. Right. But it's hard for sisters because they come in, you thinking they're getting a blow dry, and they want the work. <laughs> you're right, exactly. You know what I mean? You know, yeah, you know us. So it's hard to mix men in with women uh -huh. because they want to get in and out. Right. And it's like, you know, I'm like, look, this, this is a sister thing. Mm -hmm. The sisters, the way they do their hair and everything, you got to understand it. Mm -hmm. But one thing I have learned is that when you're in the salon, women can be from all aspects. But when they're in the salon, it's like a common denominator. Mm -hmm. Everybody just become just regular people who yeah. cool, mm -hmm. can hang out, have good conversations, a nice place to network. Uh, I just love it. I love being around powerful, strong women. Yeah. You know, I really do. Wow. Yeah. I can see. See, my thing is with uh, with owning the salon and doing those things, I'm sure you didn't had your share of, you know, things as... Drama? Yeah. <laughs> Because that's just what comes with it, you know, sometimes. But see, I knew when I went to ministry school, you learn so much about authority. Mm hmm You know? Yeah. In the spirit realm. Right. And when you have authority, you can, you know, demand things. Mm -hmm. You can cast out Oh, them. yes. Oh, yeah. And many times I have prayed, and I would ask God to remove certain people. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't have to do anything. And he made all my enemies my pussy, so I've seen them come behind my back and try. I mean, I mean, I mean. Like so this. Mm -hmm. Because I'm making that money. That hair like, coming through, right. everybody see all mm -hmm. that money coming, they see all this stuff mm -hmm. doing. They don't know it costs a lot to keep a business going. And you're buying houses. Can he say you can you say that again? Taxes mm -hmm. you gotta mm -hmm. pay. You got tuitions you gotta pay. You and everybody wants to find this invest of everything. Mm -hmm. Ooh, no. Mm-hmm. Mm, I got but stories to tell. I'm sure you do. And if they think you owe them something and all that other uh -huh. stuff. Mm -hmm. And come back mm -hmm. and, 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 and tell Make you think they doing you the favor. I'm like, I'm in Beverly Hills. This is my name up here. <laughs> right. And, you, and you're the reason why I'm here. Right. Because I gave you an opportunity. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. You get that. But, uh, you know, I, I don't I just love the journey. Yeah. I mean, God has really, uh, he really trusted me to give me this opportunity to be the first black man mm -hmm. to have a salon in Beverly Hills. Mm -hmm. And stay there for mm -hmm. over 20 years. Maybe. And I have been blown. I got so many of these young kids coming up to me. Mm -hmm. I used to go to your salon. I used to watch you when I was a little boy, wow. a little girl. I, you know, all these. And I look at them. I see them growing up and everything. And I, I, I like, wow. See, these are the ones mm -hmm. that are seeing all the hard work that mm -hmm. I've done and that respect me. The ones that are older, I respect respected them. Right. So now I'm at the point now where, even with my son, since I wrote this book, a lot of stuff in that book you didn't know. I won't go let him know because mm -hmm. I want to shelter him mm -hmm. up until he was 18. Mm -hmm. Now after that, you grow, you know, right. you start learning. Now that I've been sharing, now he shared. I'm like, oh, Lord, don't share. <laughs> <laughs> he shared it out. <laughs> he shared it out. <laughs> no, he want to talk. He uh -huh. want to talk about it. I'm like, oh, okay. And then no, I'm like, my baby, baby boy. I tell you, everybody has their own story. Mm -hmm. and, you, and you think you're unique. Right. Until you share. Mm -hmm. You start talking about it. And, um, uh, my manager, Christopher, yeah, he's for me to say how I'm, I, I'm embarrassed for some of the stuff that's in there. 
Really? You know, uh-huh. it, why should you be embarrassed? This is who you are, and this is different times, and you should just go ahead and own it. And, mm-hmm. and people are uh, 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 learning from this, and they're uh, responding good things and all that other stuff. And I say, yeah. Probably eating. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, y'all, y'all heard that. So you know the world we living in. It is about all about transparency. Like he said, and everybody want to know your business, every your every move. Mm-hmm. So that's what we were talking about. But also, uh. Let you eat a little bit. I'm no, I'm not here talking. I was talking to uh, I know I read about you starting salons, being a teach, you know, schools. Mm-hmm. That's gonna be very interesting. You know, they like in Atlanta, mm-hmm. which is you know needed probably. Mm-hmm. You know, in Atlanta, that mm-hmm. would be great. And what else? Like, like you said, Atlanta and um. I want to start my first one here in LA. Okay. Because this is where I am. Mm-hmm. And uh, I just love LA, mm-hmm. West Coast. Mm-hmm. And um, that's part of the end of my journey, my mm-hmm. legacy, mm-hmm. is to start a school. Mm-hmm. And I just know the school's going to be off the chain. And um, mm-hmm. God had put it in my spirit like years, mm-hmm. like 15, 20 years. I've been working on this school. Really? Stepped out on the water one time, I almost drowned. Didn't have quite understanding. Mm-hmm. So now I'm just sitting back, waiting for the right opportunity to come. And the right, it, it, you know, when it's a Holy Ghost hookup, you know. Oh, yeah. So it's, just, it's, it's, it's smooth. It's Everything like on a red right, carpet. Right. I feel like, you know, it's just, mm-hmm. like I was telling you when they got the show. Mm-hmm. Just like, oh, my God, like, yeah. you're doing this. And you mm-hmm. just give God glory. Yeah. So, uh, I'm at a different level of faith. Mm-hmm. Too much is given, much is expected mm-hmm. or required. Mm-hmm. So, now I had a, I'm at a different level of faith. I, I forget what, it's not a childlike faith. It's more of a wisdom, uh, mature faith. Mm-hmm. So uh, I'm just patient. Mm-hmm. God has sent prophets to me to tell me what he's going to do and how he's mm-hmm. going to make these things happen. And I'm still sitting there, chewing on it, waiting on the opportunity. And I've been still for a long time, but I think this year is the year that it's going to be, it's changing. Right. You know, mm-hmm. I, I, I feel Doors the season, mm-hmm. the season mm-hmm. is back. Mm-hmm. My okay. season. Mm-hmm. And, I, and I'm glad that I'm healthy enough at 60, still strong enough mm-hmm. to be able to run out there with my so to hang and play ball. Yes, I like you looking you good know? too. Yes, Just trying to keep it all together. Uh huh. Uh huh. Work behind that chair, doing all that stuff. You are gonna be in shape mm-hmm. on your feet all day. Oh yeah. Muscles always gonna be toned and stuff. Oh yeah. Cause I stand and work. But anyway, what was I saying? You were talking about the uh, you uh, see now you know, <laughs> y'all, y'all, y'all. but no no no, you were talking about this is your season. Yeah, your season to go out there yeah. and do this. Mm-hmm. It's do a time things. And yeah yeah. For everything. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And uh, I I remember this. The first season was such a breeze. I mean, God just took me. The second season coming around, it's more, I don't know. It's like I'm going down deep. My roots are going further down. Mm -hmm. And now, finally, starting to come up. Mm -hmm. And you know, when you have deep roots. Mm -hmm. So I'm like uh, in prayer. Yeah. Uh, A lot of things are coming my way. Mm I, I had uh, relocated my salon. I'm on Charlieville now, 9459 Charlieville in Beverly Hills. I love that area. Mm-hmm. It's uh, quaint and it's up and coming. Okay. When I went to the place on Little Santa Monica, it mm-hmm. was up and coming. No one was there. And then once I got there, next thing you know, Chamber of Commerce is over there. So, okay. They soon and moved okay. there, all those stuff. Wow. So they sold the building, and that's when I had to go find another place because they sold the building. So okay. things changed. Because the man had paid all that money, so when it's time to renew that lease, that changed too, you see. And we're working on a certain level. Mm-hmm. And then when they change, you have to buy a new spot. That's why in Beverly Hills, people are moving around all the time. Okay. Once that lease runs out, you go look for a better lease. Right, right. You know? So, uh, anyway, I'm on Charlieville now. I got a nice little spot. Uh, it, it's, it's not as big, because uh-huh. I'm not trying to do all those stylists. Uh huh. This is just a place for me to work, and I have a few stylists that can come. And I have my Aisha there. Mm-hmm. She does a whole lot of celebrities as well. But uh, uh, but I do want to open up the school, and I will have other small salons around uh, in certain places to do the Elder Charles look, mm-hmm. the Elder Charles style, yeah. the way I do the hair and everything, the way I. Just my, my whole style in itself. So how do you keep up with uh, everything that's going on, like the styles and different things like that? You know, keep relevant, like, you know what I'm saying? Because you can't just be working on a style that you learn in the 70s and 80s and be like, okay, it's going to work for the 2000s. No, no, no. It's called uh, progressive evolution. Okay. Everything evolves. Okay. And it's progressive. Okay. So when you're doing hair, like when I first started doing extensions, we did it a certain kind of way. But as the eye gets sharper, 
and people start knowing more, we have okay. to take it to the next level. Oh, okay. And still take it to the next level. So, uh, I was the first one to do the unit. I came up with the unit. Because I was uh -huh. tired of doing these uh, weeds and it would slip back and uh -huh. then we tried to pull it down and uh -huh. so right, right, right. getting all tore up. Uh -huh. So I said, well, why don't I just make a unit on a net and then I can put it on there and then just do one row and then the rest separate. So when it gets loose, I can just take it off and do that one row, braid it back up and put it back on. Uh -huh. And they never have that line of demarcation right. right here on camera. Okay. So I was doing Star Jones. At that time, she was on The View. She invited me to come on The View and do a demonstration. I've been on that twice. About three times I've been on The View. Wow. I've been on Oprah. I've been on The Talk. I've been on Access Wendy Hollywood. Williams, uh -huh. Access Hollywood. Uh -huh. For a brother that does hair, I I pretty much did tapped into all everything the stuff genres. That major right, exactly. Do, yes. You know? Yes. Yes. And, and that's a blessing. Mm -hmm. yeah. Very much so. I can brag. I don't like to brag. Oh, we need you to brag. We need, I, I've done a lot. A brother? Yes, we need. I've yes, yes, and that's good. And I have helped hundreds, if not thousands, of hairstylists with their dreams, Aww. knowing that they can do it too. That's cool. You know, and and that's the rewarding part. Oh, y'all, like. and you know what? That's good, and I'm excited, y'all, because he made me a wig. Yes, I did. By <laughs> hand. I, oh, you know, really? I started making these wigs because you know you just try to get them from the company. Oh but yeah, they just switch you. Oh, they send you some good stuff. Then you put in a big order and come back and said, Yeah, and the stuff. Mm -hmm. And these guys looking at me like they're crazy. Right, right, right. That's not, I have to get control of that. So, and, and and I know I started years ago, but I said it's progressive evolution. Mm -hmm. You see other people. On that the same bandwagon, yeah, yeah, same, yeah, and we haven't even spoken to each other. It's just that that's where hair goes. Right. It's like a, a life of its own. Mm. It evolved. Okay. And then uh, uh, Chris Rock with that dog on coke can and the relaxing skin. Oh, uh, right, right. He's not doing relaxing. My business went. Like, I'm like, oh no. Oh, wow. But it went up with the hair. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Cause you don't you don't have a hairline or yes, you, sell, I do. you sell hair? Yeah, I have my own girl, I was first to do this. I know, but you have a uh online so do you yeah, sell I bundles mean, and I sell bundles, closures, uh frontal. Okay, uh, okay, put his wig, link down there. I do all that. I've been look, I was the first. Yes. Okay. I was the first. I so was, you I was wept in hair at home. I mean in the salon. I had a girl uh -huh. wept in hair. I had to teach myself how to wet hair. Make it into that bundle. That because you used to buy hair, it's mm -hmm. just bulk. And then we had to figure out how to make it into a wet. The little things are the, 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 the it. Right, right, right. Mm -hmm. And you know, the whole bundle where you mm -hmm. saw it. Well, I told myself, I, uh, you have to do three rows this way and then do that flip. Other than that, the hair wouldn't do it. Two years I sat there in the morning trying to figure this out. And then one day I saw it at a, a place, I saw somebody sewing some hair, and I saw it. I said, that's it right there. Came on, started doing it. Next thing I know, I'm making bundles. Hired a couple of girls come in, they making bundles. We put glue on there. We selling that stuff all in Dallas, like everywhere. People's coming wow. from all over to get their hair. And then it changed. They start outsourcing. Say, when you outsource, you lose control. Mm -hmm. And the outsourcing of people that's trying to get into the business and they haven't learned it yet. Mm -hmm. So you start getting that hair that's kind of upside down. Right, right, of, not good. Yeah, right, right, right. Mm -hmm. Mixed up. Because uh -huh. hair has cuticle, got to keep it right. same way, especially dealing with that really virgin hair. Oh, which yeah. is the good stuff, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. the older they get, the better they get, mm -hmm. not the kind of the older they get, the worse it starts right. right out. So this is that raw, the real good stuff. But a certain way you have to process it. And now, you know, they do mass processing when they put a chemical in it. Mm -hmm. Well, that changes. Right, lot. yeah, yeah. And then they put a solution on there to make it look all solid. <laughs> and then after you wash it, <laughs> you it <laughs> Uh-oh. There's a lot to it. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I, I have great vendors, but my I only deal with the best. Uh-huh. Because with my reputation on the line, oh, I can't yeah. afford someone You a brand, stuff. yeah. So, I Big replace brand. it. I make sure they're happy. Uh-huh. This is fun. You, you did good. Yes. Listen, I ain't do that good. You had me intrigued. I was like, man. But y'all, so y'all know, I'm going to leave all his links, Elgin Charles links down in the description box below, down from his salon, the address to his salon, to his Instagram, down to where his, you can get his book, because I'm definitely going to read that book, definitely, because I know it's going to inspire me as a, uh, you know, a business owner, a person that does YouTube. I mean, I'm sure it got, anything in that book can help all of us. Because oh, yeah. he has, he, you have done a lot of stuff. So, yeah. I mean, I'm very, very inspired. I hope you guys have been inspired today. And so, on that note, I am going to sign out, you guys. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Share this video with anyone and everyone. Let them know what your girls on this channel. And I'll see you guys tomorrow with another video. I love you guys so, so, so much. Don't forget to stay safe. Stay blessed.
Peace out. Peace, love, and hair grease. What's up, my V love? I got the sounds. Smack delicious. Mm. I got the sounds. Smack delicious. Mm. I got the sounds. Smack delicious. You like, share, and subscribe. Beat love, beat love, beat love three times. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe.